Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I'm going to talk about an interesting subject, and this is the subject of parabens. Parabens are preservatives. The reason I'm talking about this is because parabens are in everything. They're in shampoos and soaps and moisturizers and lotions and toothpaste and makeup and all different kinds of things that you put on your kids' skin or your own skin. Parabens are usually there. Okay, so they're a preservative. They actually started studying parabens in the 1930s. In fact, uh, parabens are the most studied of all of the preservatives. But there are some problems. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all the facts and then what you're going to do is you're going to decide, okay, do I think parabens are okay or do I want to look into this a little bit further? I want the decision to be up to you. One thing that um, I don't think is a good thing is just to say to people, oh, I heard so-and-so say that parabens are bad. What you want to do is you want to find out the information for yourself. So I'm going to give you some uh, places that you can also go to find out information about parabens. So. First of all, parabens are an ester. They're made up of alcohol and acid, uh, hydrobenzoic acid. That just gives you kind of a scientific little thing about them. All right, they're in food and they're used in makeups and soaps and shampoos and everything out there. Since 2004, now we have everything that is within whatever that food is or whatever that thing is that we're going to put on our body. There's a label on the back of it and you can read the label. At the very bottom is usually where you're going to re uh, read about parabens. There'll be some other words like methyl, propyl, butyl uh, words in front of parabens. There's actually five different types of parabens. Some of the things that you pick up may, may have all five of them. All right, so when they were doing the, all of the research on parabens, uh, the FDA found them to be perfectly safe. They weren't causing any issues. But this was before the 1990s. What happened in the 1980s is pharmaceutical companies went to the government and they said, look, all of our pharmaceutical things that we're creating, they're either plant-based, herb-based, or animal-based, so they're not subject to patent. They said, look, if we could, be, uh, we could have permission to go in to make chemicals, synthetic chemicals, and so forth, we could address a lot more health issues in the world today, which would really help people. And they were right. It would help. But it also opened the floodgates for a lot of other problems. They received the permission from the government. They started creating all of these different chemicals. An example is dimethicone. There was probably, in, up until the 80s, there was probably five different forms of dimethicone. Now there's like 2,500 different forms of dimethicone. So anyway, all of these synthetic ingredients, they found by the end of the 1990s that there were problems, and the problems were called hormone disruptors. Hormone disruptors have an estrogenic effect on the body, and they cause cell proliferation. In other words, they cause the rapid growth and reproduction of cells, which can lead to cancer, and this is what they were seeing. So they started looking actually at parabens. Now the uh, United States were still holding fast that there was nothing wrong with parabens. But they were starting to find parabens in cancerous breast tissue. But the government said, well, just because there's parabens in cancerous breast, breast tissue doesn't mean that parabens are causing cancer or whatever. And, you know, there's some truth to that as well. So what happened is, is some other countries began to pick up the slack of research on parabens. The United States is a leader in research on any subject, but they kind of dropped the ball on this one. And so um, Britain, Great Britain, and also Japan picked up the slack. Now in England, um, there was a doctor, a scientist by the name of Dr. Darber, D-A-R-B-R-E. You can go online and read some of her research. And what she had found is that she actually, in her first study in 2002, she actually found parabens, three different types of parabens that were in cancerous breast tissue. And again, they said, well, just because it's there doesn't mean that it's causing it. So then 2004 and 2006 and 2008, she began doing more and more studies on parabens and cancerous breast tissue. 99% of cancerous breast tissue, she would see all five of the parabens present. And also what she found is that 60% of them were intact, meaning they had not bypassed the liver, meaning that these people were not getting these parabens from food, they were getting from them from the things that they were putting on themselves, like the lotions, the moisturizers, the shampoos, the toothpaste, the lotions, all of those, you know, all of the soap, all of those different things. Okay, so the parabens actually were intact. 
Now, as I mentioned before, 60% of what we put on our skin gets into our bloodstream. But here's the problem. Women put on approximately 13 different things per day. Men, five to seven different things per day. And then we slop all these other things onto our kids. So clearly the parabens, the, the, the molecular weight of that molecule of the paraben was small enough that it was penetrating our skin. Now, one sh thing that she did notice, she thought maybe it was uh, perhaps it was the, the deodorants and the antiperspirants that people were using because um, that's, you put those on in your armpit, which is close to the breast tissue, and maybe that was the problem. And of course, they have parabens in them. And so what she, but what she found is that in interviewing a lot of her subjects that she was studying, that they never used deodorants or antiperspirants. So she knew that it was, it was the onslaught of all of these different things that people were using that actually was leading to it. So what she found is the parabens are carcinogenic. Carcinogenic in two ways. Number one, they fuel cancer cells. And number two, they transform healthy cells into cancerous cells. And that was the conclusion that she uh, came to after hundreds of different studies of doing this. Now in Japan, they found something that was similar. They found that even small percentage of, of parabens in the bloodstream of a male, that it would um, lower testosterone and it would also lower sperm cell count. And so that would be something to the father should be aware of. That should be something that boyfriends should, uh, boys, young men, they all need to be aware of that as well. Usually when you say something to a man that's going to lower their testosterone, they usually perk up and, you know, they actually listen on it. So <clears throat> now there are safer preservatives that can be used. Uh, tosopherol, which is vitamin E, sor sorbic acid, which is vitamin C. There's also uh, things like grapefruit seed extract, essential oils can be used, um, potassium sorbate. There's a number of other different choices. And so oftentimes you'll see now on labels, paraben and sulfate free, okay? A lot of parents are being drawn to these because they don't want the parabens. They don't want them in their shampoos or their deodorants, their antiperspirants, their toothpaste, their lotions, their moisturizers, and they most certainly do not want them on their children so that, you know, you get that absorption, which is, I think, really smart. Now, um, the other thing that you need to understand about organic is organic just means that it's safe. It doesn't always mean that it's going to work in the same way. Unfortunately, all those chemicals do work um, in different ways, so you need to understand that getting like an organic um, deodorant or antiperspirant, it doesn't necessarily work in the same way. Uh, there was another thing, oh yes, another thing that they found in the Japanese study is that parabens actually age people quicker. So since, you know, everyone wants to stay, you know, look like they're 20 when they're 90, that would be something else that you would want to consider. So look into different alternatives. Make sure that you become a savvy and wise shopper. Definitely read labels. Like I mentioned before, you know, parabens are everywhere. They're in food, you know, they're used as a preservative in food and the FDA requires anything that goes on a shelf, it has to have a preservative in it. If not, bacteria can form, fungi can form, it can blow up on the shelf, it's not good. So you have to have a preservative. But what you want and, what, and the places that, that you purchase your makeup from and all your moisturizers and everything that you're putting on a baby, a young child, yourself, your husband, your wife, whatever it is, you want to make certain that it's as safe as it can possibly be. Be a wise shopper. Be a savvy shopper. Um, look up information again on the internet. If you're actually looking for studies, you'll find the abstracts, but you have to go to a university library in order to actually download the studies. But there are tons of different articles that are out there that will give you an understanding and overall view of what parabens are all about. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.